Hi everyone, this is Ashley Techie Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today I'll be talking about dandelion medicine and moving through cleansing to courage. So dandelion is an herb, a lot of us know it grows all over the place in lawns and even in sidewalk cracks. And up until the last few hundred years, this plant was actually cultivated and uh, spaces were made in yards um, for dandelion. People would actually pull up their grasses uh, prior to the 1800s to make room for things like dandelion and chickweed and other medicinal and edible plants. So the sort of war on dandelion is a really relatively new thing. And so looking back to our ancestors and how they use this plant can give us a lot of information and um, can sort of reinvigorate how we see them and how we can utilize these plants. So dandelion is a very um, expansive plant. And let's talk a little bit about the nature of dandelion. So in traditional astrology, this plant is ruled by Jupiter. And we can see Jupiter in this plant because it goes from this very bright flower. And so the qualities of Jupiter are um, brightness, pleasing and graceful. Those are just some of the attributes. So we see in this flower, it is very bright. It's got this beautiful yellow head. Um, and then it turns into this very kind of this orb of, um, of little seeds. And it almost looks, um, you know, it looks kind of like a, a moon. And some people have said that this plant embodies the sun, the moon, and the stars all in one because it has the bright yellow head, that round full moon shape, and then you blow it and it, all the little stars float away. But even though, you know, it has those qualities, you know, in classical astrology, it's, it's really a plant of Jupiter because Jupiterian things expand and, um, you know, they're, they're very diffusive and very expansive. And that's definitely something that dandelion has as one of its great attributes. Um, the seeds of dandelion can actually float as far as five miles. So that's pretty impressive for a tiny, tiny little seed that it can travel that far. And again, that's sort of matching with that Jupiterian energy of the ability for it to travel long distances. Um, this plant also has, um, it's very tenacious, so it can grow in just about any condition. And, um, you know, I've seen it in, I live in uh, Maryland, but we live really close to DC. And in DC, you'll see it growing, you know, out of walls and up through sidewalk cracks. And um, it just has this incredible perseverance to it. And so when we think about this plant and embodying it in its medicine, we can see this tenacity as something if we're feeling like we need more of that, you know, being able to really root ourselves down. This plant has a very deep um, and single tap root that goes straight down into the earth. If you've ever gardened and you've tried to dig it up, you're like, where does it stop? Because it just keeps going down and down and down. So it's very, very anchored in the earth. So it's anchored, but it's yet also very, very um, diffusive and expansive above the earth. So it has that, um, you know, if we're looking for something that has those qualities, this plant shows us how to really, um, yeah, anchor and expand, right? So how about the medicine of dandelion? What are the medicinal qualities? Why would we want to take this as, as, a, as a plant medicine? Well, the cool thing about this plant is that every part of it is useful. So the root, the leaves, even the stem and the latex that's in the stem and the flower heads all have uses. Um, the, the main medicinal parts of the plant are the leaves and the roots, and they are different medicines. And this is what we find true for a lot of plants is even though, you know, we have two parts coming from the same plant, they actually have very different qualities. So the let's talk about the, the, um, the leaves first. So the leaves of dandelion are very high in calcium, iron, manganese. Um, they have potassium in them and the potassium allows them to be a wonderful, what we call potassium sparing diuretic. So this plant, the leaves are, um, they're diuretic. So if you have, if you're holding on to fluids or you have edema or anything where uh, the fluids in the waters are not really moving adequately out of the body, this is a wonderful part of dandelion to use. And you can just eat and forage the wild leaves. You can cook them into soups and stews or into stir fries. 
and you'll get this wonderful potassium sparing diuretic. So often, you know, more um, <clears throat> pharmaceutical diuretics, they'll actually take potassium out and that can be very dangerous, especially for the heart and, and cardiac fun function. But dandelion has potassium in it. So while it's clearing out excess water, it's actually restoring and adding potassium to your body, which is pretty incredible. It also contains high amounts of vitamins A, uh, D, and K. Um, so that's pretty, I'm sorry, A, C, and K. So vitamins A, C, and K are also quite high in the leaves of dandelion. So it makes, you know, it's very nutritious on a number of different levels. Uh, now the roots are different. The, the roots have more of an affinity to the liver. And so the, the roots contain uh, some soluble um, fibers called uh, inulin. And inulin is a, 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 a fructose-based fiber. And um, it has been shown in a 2004 study, they actually showed that people that ingest this inulin, um, it actually feeds the bifidobacterium in the gut. And this is one of our positive, good uh, probiotics that our bodies need. So if we're looking for ways to build up our good intestinal flora, taking dandelion root either as a decoction, which is the ideal way to get the most of the inulin out, which is basically just cooking the cooking the roots. So you're making like um like a strong tea by simmering the roots for maybe 15, 20 minutes with the cap on and then drinking that. Um, but you can also get some of the inulin from um, a tincture. If there's some sediment in there, you can get some from there as well, or just by eating the roots even better. Um, you can just chop them up and add them into soups and foods as well. And then you'll get even more of that fiber. So that's one really great benefit of this plant. Um, in terms of the liver, uh, it does also seem to to increase phase two detoxification of the liver. So this is very helpful um, when we're trying to clear out things like excess hormones from the body, or if there's if we've had any sort of environmental exposure, or even if our hormones inside of us are somehow imbalanced, if we have maybe we're estrogen dominant in some way or our cycles are off. Sometimes people will find that by taking dandelion root, because it increases the ability of the body to break down hormones and clear them out through the colon, that they'll find that they'll actually have, uh, they'll be able to modulate their, their hormones just by working via the liver. So that's a really interesting way to think about using this plant as well. Um, it also has an effect on pancreatic enzymes. And so it has been used in diabetes and there's been a number of studies showing that it is helpful uh, for people that have um, blood sugar regulation issues. Um, it's a choleretic as well. So it helps to increase the flow of bile through the gallbladder in into the digestive system. And as a result, it's a gentle laxative. So if you have constipation or you just want to give your bowels some extra support to move toxins out, it will do that. So we can see here that, you know, by taking either the root or the leaves or ideally both together, that you're going to be giving your body a really great chance to detoxify and eliminate. So that's the first thing that I think this plant does really well is it helps to cleanse and clear. Um, also, because of its, um, its affinity to the liver and also the, um, the affinity to, um, or its energetics that are very cooling, it's also a really great cooling bitter that can be used for excess heat in the body. And my teacher, Matthew Wood, talks about how it sort of helps to clear heat, um, you know, clear damp heat um, and heat that's sort of stripping away the fluids of the body too, um, or baking down the fluids of the body, I think is what he said. And so it can be a really nice one to use if you look at your tongue and you see that your tongue is maybe it has patches where it's being peeled off an herbal um, tongue assessment, we call that a mapped tongue, where the tongue looks sort of geographically mapped out where there's light and, and uh, kind of white and pink patches. So if you have that in your body, or if you feel like there's just heat that's just sort of like really exhausting you, you might want to think about using dandelion, especially the root, um, as a medicine. So now, how do we move from detoxifying or cleansing into courage? Well, this is something that dandelion helps us do. Um, and this partly is associated with its um, planetary rulership 
to um, Sagittarius. So Jupiter is the planetary ruler of Sagittarius and uh, Sagittarius, the, the image is the archer with his bow and arrow. And so if we think about the archer and their ability to sort of see the prize or see what they're aiming at, to pull their arrow back and then to let it go and to see it travel a far distance, um, you know, that's the tenacity and that's the focus and also the courage that the archer has and, and what they embody and what Sagittarius embodies. And as a Jupiter ruled plant, this plant also gives us that type of energy. It allows us to, by getting rid of excess heat and even dampness that might cloud our vision a little bit, um, it can help us to sort of see where it is we're actually going and then to make adjustments with what we're putting out there so that we can actually you know, make the mark and not miss the mark um, through clouded vision. So I hope that is some food for thought for you. And if you'd like to use dandelion, um, there's a number of ways I mentioned in the talk, but you can also always use it as a plant spirit medicine, which means you can just sit with the plant and study it, have a conversation with it, um, try to get to know it, ask it, why do you grow here? Um, how do you stay strong so long? And, you know, dandelions are actually, they have the longest flowering season of any of any Asteraceae flowering plant. So, you know, how do you last so long? Like, how do you, how do you keep blooming day after day? How do you keep flowering day after day from early spring all the way into late autumn? We can ask it questions about how it does that. We can also use just drop doses of a plant medicine. And I like to use fresh plant tincture and ideally the whole plant. And this is something that Susan Weed really recommends that I found to be a wonderful way to, to make plant medicine out of dandelion is you harvest the flower, the stem, the leaves and the roots. And then you make a tincture all together out of those, um, that whole plant. And um, then you'll take just, you know, maybe three to five drops if you're doing energetic work with it. But if you're also really wanting to use more of the, the medicine for that deep cleansing, um, you can go a lot higher up until about maybe I would say two full droppers of the plant. That's going to be probably about half a teaspoon. Um, and you can do that three times a day to get the most out of the plant medicine. So thanks again for watching. Let me know what you know about dandelion. How do you like to use its medicine? Um, tell me about the conversations you've had with this plant. And um, yeah, we'll keep in dialogue. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.